Welcome to Queer Conversation. In the studio with me today is Kate Box, who most of you would know from Wentworth or the other series, Deadlock. Welcome, Kate. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for making time to be here today to oh, chat course. with us about the next big thing that you have just been finished filming. Mm -hmm. It's going to be released on SBS on Thursday, the 26th of October mm -hmm. at 9.30. It's called Erotic Stories. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I have watched it yesterday, last yeah. night, with yeah. my partner. And we thought it was fantastic. It was sexy, it was entertaining, it was funny, but also serious aspects of it. Yeah. So I guess my first question is, what attracted you to the role? Well, I really trusted the creative team on it. So it was written by Sarah Walker, directed by Madeline Gottlieb, and also um, uh, one of the producers, Liam, they created this beautiful um, uh, web series called Latecomers, which I'd seen and I just adored. And it dealt with, you know, it dealt with sex and intimacy and it was done in a way that was so beautiful. So I felt like I was entering a team that I could really trust, I think. Um, obviously, you know, when you're doing a, a, a tale that um, deals with eroticism, it's a fairly vulnerable thing to be a part of and so you want to make sure that you can really trust the team that you're doing it with and erotic stories. Obviously this is the first time it's been made so you don't know what the what it's going to be like and it was just done so beautifully and so safely and in a way that we all felt like we could be really vulnerable because I think that's such a big part of eroticism and desire is that you have to let your guard down in some way and I think for a lot of the you know, the, a lot of the humans inhabiting these stories, they have had to keep their guard up in life a lot because they're not necessarily um, uh, characters that uh, will ever really play sexual leads and they often have to defend their identity somewhat. And so to be involved in a project where you just go, have to let your guard down and go, this is who I am, this is what I desire, this is how I desire it, um, this is how I play, this is how I love. Yeah, it just requires you to kind of, yeah, really just let it all hang out. And, I, and, um, and this series does that so beautifully. I think because they're also short episodes. I mean, you can watch a, you know, episodic TV show and not much can happen in 30 minutes, but all of these stories, just, there was, they're just so massive with, within this tiny frame. And because it's dealing with eroticism, and that requires that vulnerability. I think you just get to know the characters really quickly and care about them really quickly because they're putting themselves on the line. And, and so, yeah, we join them really easily, which is what I found so beautiful, you know. Did you need courage? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it, it is a co courageous step for an actress. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm 45. <laughs> I was actually reading this review yesterday of it and they were like, you know, and then this story kind of um, is about a middle-aged friendship. And I was like, oh, I thought I was just ticking the lesbian box, but I'm now ticking the middle-aged lesbian box. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I've done a double whammy there. Um, but yeah, I've definitely never had a role where sensuality and desire is at the forefront of the character's storytelling. And I, I did find it incredibly liberating. I mean, it's, you know, we all ache, we all love, we all desire, we all have needs. And I think so often we, um, you know, as an actor, you don't get to express that part of yourself because it's not often chosen to be seen in our storytelling. So um, it did require courage, but it also, but when you take that leap, the rewards from it are pretty massive mm -hmm. as well, yeah. And it would be quite easy to um, play or act with, with Danielle Cormack. Yeah. Um, yeah. She, she's a character. <laughs> yeah, she's wonderful. We had a yeah. really great time, actually. I mean, we worked together on Rake. We missed each other on Wentworth. Um, but we have, you know, we've, we've been friends over the years. And it was just such a delight to play in that world with Dan. She's just a really beautiful actor and excellent human. And it was, it was just a lot of silliness and stupidity. And M as well was just the perfect partner to do all of the intimacy scenes with because she's, you know, gentle and fun and confident. And um, yeah, we had a really good time. We had an incredible intimacy coordinator who just really led us through it beautifully. So it was great. You mentioned before that it felt quite safe because mm. of, of the team 
you know, I can't believe there was a time when we made shows like this without an intimacy coordinator. Having, you know, we don't do, you know, we've always had stunt coordinators, we've always had experts that come in and teach us how to do things safely. And it's been a long time <laughs> in the industry without having someone like that. And I, I, this, this show couldn't be made, definitely couldn't be made safely without somebody dedicated to um, walking you through that stuff. I mean, so what kind of person is that an intimacy coordinator? What's yeah, what so we had yeah Amy Cater on ours, who was wild, and they just um, they I mean they I mean every intimacy coordinator works differently depending on the actors that they're working with and the director that they're working with, but it just was very open, frank conversation about what we were comfortable with, what we were not comfortable with what the story was trying to achieve and how we can use our bodies to help the story achieve that, what isn't necessary and what we do feel is necessary. It just, and then also just things like knowing the shots. So knowing what part of you is gonna be seen, just gives, it's a, just a different confidence knowing that, y like you don't want to, you know, if the camera's there, you know what it's capturing. You kind of like, you know, it's not gonna be any which way. You know exactly what it's, what it's capturing. That was really important to me. I mean, I, I did, you know, I've done a few sex scenes in my career, not that many, but I remember doing one on rake and I was six months pregnant at the time and we didn't have an intimacy coordinator because they weren't a thing then. And it was just the most wildly vulnerable kind of ridiculous experience. <laughs> I mean, mostly I was just worried about <laughs> pissing myself, I think, because I was so pregnant and having this fairly like wild active sex scene. But to have just kind of sat down in the room and, okay, so you'll do this and then you'll go on top and then the rain will come in and this will be there and it'll be wild. And I was just sitting there going, okay, right, is that what we're going to do? <laughs> okay, because I should just mention, if you can't see it, that I'm carrying a lot here. And, you know, just mm. to not have somebody dedicated to kind of not only creating that little piece of art, but also making you feel safe within it is crazy mm. to me. The three series that I mentioned, mm. Men was in now, yeah. um, you play a lesbian. Yeah. You got lesbian or tattooed on your forehead. I like do, yeah. You do. Is that I what do. you want to do? Yeah, I have lesbian. I mean, we all love it, but. <laughs> 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 it is what I want to do. I mean, look, it's interesting because I was thinking, you know, the other day about um, roles that I get offered or roles I'm asked to audition for. and. Um, and I actually, you know, I just kind of have always assumed that, you know, it's fairly open. What I'll get asked to do is fairly open. And I actually looked at what I've been offered or asked to do over the past, you know, five years. And 90% of them would be lesbian roles, which is so, which is so interesting. Like, um, and also, I mean, for me, great. I would happily play a lesbian until the end of my days. It's a place where I feel deeply comfortable and I think our stories have so often been told by people who aren't from the queer community and it's vitally important for us to step in the driving seat and actually do that. Um, but it is interesting that, um, that kind of, that the world, like I'm doing a couple, I've done a couple of jobs this year and they're both lesbian jobs and they're short, they're just little guest roles on things. And it would be this thing of a, you know, casting agent going through as a lesbian, I'll just give Kate, <laughs> middle-aged lesbian, I'll give Kate Box a call. You know, which, yeah, which I love, I absolutely love. And like I said, I would happily do that forever. But it is, it, it is interesting that, you know, once you start, you play one lesbian role. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The post we did a couple of weeks ago mm. about announcing the, the, the series mm. with you and uh, Danielle Cormack, that, mm. uh, that is the, the promo uh, visuals that we received. Yes. So many likes and shares and can't write and whatever not. I mean, the girls are audience just, um, yeah. you know, loves that, that there is an, an actress out there who is really out and proud and are very you, much so. You are? I didn't ask you actually. Oh I God, just no. Assume, I mean, please assume, assume away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. very, you know, this, very this, proud. This, I mean, this is just crazy that this is not um, blocking your career. No, uh, my God. In fact, the most interesting roles, I, I mean, it was really probably um, Riot was the first show that I did where I played a very kind of openly out vocal lesbian. And it changed me. I played Mark McCann in that, yeah, mm. who was kind of a brilliant activist and um, and the first openly gay Australian to win custody of her kids, yeah, oh, which yeah. was really beautiful because I have three yeah. small babies and it was really kind of a beautiful role for me to play. But I think something, you know, something really changed for me doing that. I, I mean, I'd never really been closeted, but I'd never really been out in the industry. And I think... Um, 
doing a show like that just I don't know there's always there'd always been a little I think there must have been something in me that was hiding a, a little bit and and doing a role like that just meant that there was nothing hiding and with that comes this new sense of authenticity and bravery and courage which I which affected my life quite deeply and also it just affected me as an actor it just meant that I could front up to work coming from a much more kind of honest and sincere place you know it was really it was a big game changer for me yeah going back to um, erotic stories mm. we had the um, premiere of, um, of erotic stories at South by Southwest and I sat next to my best mate Lucy, <laughs> who I have never seen squirm more in her life. She was just like, God, it's moving around the chair. She couldn't, she's like, oh, it's just so weird. It's like watching my sister, but you're not my sister, but it's really hot and sexy. And so I'm kind of turned on, but I can't look. It was great. It was great. <laughs> yeah, very fun. Yeah. So what are your emotions with um, the series being streamed for the first time tomorrow? It's mm -hmm. the launch. Are you nervous? Are you excited? Are you... It's such a beautiful series. I'm so proud to be a part of it. I've seen four of the eight episodes and they're all so unique and so magnificent. I think, you know, you grow up watching TV and you notice the absence of certain voices as you grow up watching TV. You notice the stories that are missing and not that you don't engage with story. Of course you do. That's what empathy is. You kind of find yourself in, you know, another hero's journey. I think something like this is just so magnificent because the people who really need these stories and need to see themselves have a place to find it and then you know I think what was it Zoe Coombs Ma said you know what straight people do in the privacy of their own home is none of my business so you know I don't know what they're going to take from it but I actually think you know if they're curious they'll take an extraordinary amount from it I you know it's all the themes that erotic, erotic stories deals with are so universal and they're just told from really unique perspectives and I think that that's just such a crucial part of our storytelling narrative in this country and beyond and so I feel really proud to be a part of it and you know what I haven't really done many sex scenes in television and you know so deciding at 45 to take your kid off for a TV show is you know was a bold choice for me and I watched it on the massive screen at George Street the other day and you know, I didn't hate myself. Like, I was like, that's okay. You know, it, like I felt really, it felt like me. And that was a really surprising thing because I don't, I'm normally quite, you know, I, I jacket and I pant and I kind of, you know, I clothe well, <laughs> a lot, not necessarily well, but so just, it's a vulnerable thing seeing it. And I, I just thought, you know what, at 45, like, go on then, give it a crack, put it out there. And I, so I, I don't feel really anxious about it. I just, I, I think that, they're beautiful stories and I'm really proud to be a part of them. And eroticism is just, it's across all of us. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel really grateful actually. Mm. No, it's, I mean, as I said, I, I walked away thinking this was, this was number one, there was a lot packed in mm -hmm. 30 minutes. Yeah. That, was of, that was like, wow, 30 minutes and yeah. it covered, I, said, I don't want to re reveal too much, but it covered a lot of things that, um, our community will resonate with. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt Great. about it. Great. So yeah. um, it felt, and I don't know that, it felt though that it was produced by a queer cast. I don't mm -hmm. know if that is the case yeah. or not, but yeah. the writer knew what they were writing about. Yeah. The, the director knew, yeah. like it, that just it makes it a difference, like huh? It just, yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Well, I think that one of the, um, you know, one of the briefs for the writers was not necessarily to make them autobiographical, but to make them really personal stories. And then, so that, you get that as a beginning where a writer's willing to kind of put so much of their heart into a script. And then you populate it with people who that resonates with, who are part of that community. And then you get kind of brilliant directors on board to make that happen. It's, mm. it's pretty wonderful, yep. yeah. Well, fantastic. Well, thanks so much for coming in and Life chatting with us about erotic stories. Yeah. And it, the episode is called... The, the Deluge. Deluge. I can't yeah. I don't know if I pronounce it right. Deluge. I like the way you say it. Deluge. Deluge. Yeah. Deluge. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what does it mean? Do you the know? The Deluge, the downpour. Kind of the de so it's, it's kind of symbolizing Kara coming out of this very big sexual drought and then the downpour. Yeah. And yeah. Right.
Fantastic. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it will be streamed on SBS On Demand from the 26th of October. Thanks, Kate, for coming in. I appreciate it. Oh, so nice to talk with you. Thanks, Silky. Great. I am down to...